One of the most dramatic images we have been able to see from the bin Laden takedown is the one part of the raid that didn't make it back. The special forces helicopter somehow crippled during the 40-minute operation. Navy SEALs blew up the chopper to try to keep its secrets out of the wrong hands. CIA chief Leon Panetta referred to the aircraft involved in the mission simply as Black Hawk helicopters. But experts taking a closer look at images like these say they're seeing evidence of something more elaborate than a common Black Hawk. The world may have been tipped off to a new weapon of war, the stealth helicopter. Joining me now, David Axe, military reporter for Wired Magazine's Danger Room blog. Thanks for joining me tonight, David. My pleasure, Lawrence. David, uh, what do you make of this helicopter? How much did we know about this kind of uh, stealth helicopter before Sunday night? Well, we knew that the Pentagon had experimented with various kinds of uh, stealth modifications of existing helicopters and also uh, scratch built, you know, from new, uh, the Comanche attack helicopter, which was also a stealth design, but canceled it in 2004. So we'd seen stealth choppers before. We didn't know there were operational stealth choppers. And what makes them stealth? How do they, for example, the first thing I would wonder about in stealth is how do they quiet a helicopter? The helicopter is an, an incredibly noisy moving vehicle. Very true. There's three kinds of stealth when it comes to helicopters. Choppers generate a lot of heat. You can detect that by IR sensors. Uh, they generate a gigantic radar return because of all the moving parts. Uh, and they also are loud. You're right. So much of that signature, they call it, is focused on the tail rotor of the, of the helicopter. Again, generates heat, generates noise, generates a radar return. So if you address those three problems with various, uh, uh, you, you can surround the tail rotor with uh, pieces that sort of smooth out the radar return, you can muffle the sound, and you can apply special paint that absorbs some of that IR signature. So you focus on the tail, you address a lot of those problems. But how quiet can these things get? I mean, bin Laden had to have heard these things coming down in his backyard, didn't he? That's true, but I'm not sure that the stealth helicopter was intended to fool bin Laden. I think the reason the Pentagon used its top-secret stealth choppers and risked losing them, as it did, uh, was to ensure the Pakistanis could not prevent the raid from arriving at the compound. Now, the, the Pakistanis have custody of what was left there. They've hauled the wreckage uh, away. Are we going to have any trouble getting that back from them? I'm not sure that we need to. The, the, the secrets, so to speak, of, of a stealth helicopter are not really secrets at all. Uh, the design principles are pretty widely known, but few nations have the uh, organizational skills, militarily speaking, and the resources to actually build, train with, and operate these. So any nation that can build helicopters, if they were willing to spend, I don't know, a few hundred million or a few billion dollars on building a handful of them, could do so. So the, the secrets were not the design elements, which were betrayed in part by the wreckage. The secret was that we had them at all, uh, which was a surprise, but is not surprising, if that makes any sense. What is the best theory as to what disabled that helicopter that we had to leave behind? I would guess that it was something called power settling. So the helicopter had enough juice to reach the compound and to land, but not enough to take off again, which requires a lot of horsepower. So it's not uncommon in Afghanistan and Pakistan to see helicopters land and are stranded. So when that helicopter stranded there at the compound, the operators had to make a decision. What do we do about this thing? They made a snap decision to blow it up, piled into uh, probably a, an extra helicopter that was orbiting nearby, and uh, maybe didn't realize they'd left behind a large, intact portion of the bird. David Axe with Wired Magazine's Danger Room blog. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, David. Thank you.